right. I think that makes everybody happy that we're to item number R7. Uh, I will make the obvious acknowledgement uh, that I am aware of. Uh, this is a record attendance for the Shasta County Board of Supervisors, at least in my tenure on the board. Yeah. So let me go ahead and uh, outline a process for item number R7 so we can all be on the same page and understand what it is that we are doing this morning. Um, R7 is a discussion to receive input and discuss matters regarding geoengineering chemtrails. Consider providing direction to staff and consider taking other appropriate action as necessary. In a few moments, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Supervisor Giacomini to introduce her uh, guest speaker today. What we have is we have, um, we have a presentation that has been arranged in advance through Supervisor Giacomini who placed this item on today's agenda. In addition to that, there are a number of speakers that had been arranged through Supervisor Giacomini to also join with that first presentation in order so that they might be grouped and clustered together. We're going to honor that request and take them as you had asked for in advance and agreed to Supervisor Giacomini. After that, there are a lot of requests. In fact, uh, uh, a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> uh, as I'm sure that you recognize, we're going to take those in the order received today. Okay? Okay, I'll proceed as quickly as I can now. So we have the issue of climate engineering and semantics are important. The, too much of media and other officials, not saying this board, they've been very courteous, but have not used the scientific terms and this is, this is not used for a reason because uh, the, the term chemtrails is not a scientific term so we try to avoid those terms. But when you see CBS News, Geoengineering to fight, go fight global warming is now mainstream topic conversation with all scientific organizations and with governmental officials, such as John Holdren, Obama's science advisor, who is actively advocating for the use of geoengineering. And again, this is, these are aspects that media does not cover because this would legitimize this issue. This would bring credibility to it. So we do have, again, science data that's it's too extensive to document here, but when we have current administration officials advocating for these programs and the immediate need to implement these programs, this subject should not be marginalized as it typically is by media. When we have, this is, this is from MIT, this diagram is from MIT where you clearly see an aircraft spraying particulates out the back. Now, again, this is mainstream scientific discussion we have every major science institution talking about these issues right now, that, that these programs must be implemented. And so again, when, what we ask is that this issue be given attention. And our point here today, irregardless of where the contamination is coming from over Shasta County and the rest of the globe, we ask that the science be looked at and, and that the legitimacy of this issue be acknowledged with the science terms, that this is brought to public attention and brought into a public dialogue. This is, again, only the tip of the iceberg for what's available for documentation. This is a 40-page congressional research document, geoengineering governance and technology. There's a, a number of documents like this. We have, even going back to the 60s, for example, we have 80-page presidential documents outlining the scope and scale of these programs even back that far. We see skies like this, certainly we have a lot of people telling us this is normal commercial traffic. That, it's, it's, that this, is, this is normal and, and that this is just random flights flying wherever they fly and that this stuff sticks in the air. But if this is random, that's not so random. Do we think the commercial aircraft fly in grid patterns? Again, the data is absolutely there, but we have major agencies telling us that this isn't so. In fact, there's there's... Uh, a NASA document that says chemtrails aren't real. But again, they use a term that's not scientific on purpose. And at the same time, we have patents from NASA for geoengineering. So uh, there's, there's been a, a tremendous effort to try to marginalize an issue that's tremendously impactful for all of us, equally impactful. And I, I, I certainly don't see the board as adversarial to us. I mean, I'm very grateful that we've been allowed to speak here and bring this issue up to light. And, and for our point, I think acknowledgement and disclosure is due for, in this case, for local agencies, the contamination issue. Because I've spoken in front of California 
Air Resources Board. I've spoken in front of the California Energy Commission. And it seems that all these agencies are unwilling to, to look at this issue. And at this point, there are certain factors that can't be denied. And contamination is one of those factors. So we have NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, admitting on the record that the atmosphere is now full of particulates and they don't know where they're coming from. So this is, this is quite astounding when you have the agency that's supposed to study this issue that's, that's literally um, unable to identify the source. When I spoke in front of the California Energy Commission in Sacramento, they acknowledged the state was losing 20 to 40 percent of its rainfall from, quote, particulates of unknown origin. But that investigation was never followed through. Uh, there's an investigation going right now with state water quality. I spoke to that representative there. Fishing Game has acknowledged that there's aluminum running down the waterways. I spoke to the representative with uh, California State Water Quality who made it clear that they were not going to test the rainfall for this contamination. But isn't that where runoff comes from? So again, we have uh, an unwillingness to look at the obvious sources. This is a satellite image. It's a little foggy, but if you look closely in the... The bottom left quadrant, you can see aircraft trails, blanket spraying the Pacific. This is visible on satellite imagery every single day. These silvery white skies we see are particulates blowing in from the coastal regions, and we have patents request, or, or stating the dire need to enhance the marine layer, to try to deflect some of the sun's incoming thermal energy. It's called solar radiation management. So. When we have satellite imagery of this happening, and planes flying in, in loops and grids, and we have this material blowing in on us, it's coming from somewhere, and CARB, this is important. We know this metal's falling on us. We have, I furnished you guys today with about 40 lab tests uh, from the state certified lab showing a very, very substantial amount of metal. And again, aluminum does not exist in the environment in free form. That's important to remember because a lot of agencies try to say it's a common element, we should expect it. This is not the case. It doesn't exist in free form. So it's coming from somewhere, and CARB has told us it is not coming from China. So we know it's a more local origin. Now, we have a UV issue. This is another matter of disclosure for the board. We have a known, verifiable, indisputable contamination issue, and we know the board can't stop this. Nobody here expects that. We know that's far beyond the scope of the board, but we do have a contamination issue that's a danger to the citizens. So what we're asking, what I'm asking, is disclosure of this contamination, and we also have a very, very dangerous UV level. The bark is being burned off of trees in town. We're metering this UV with state-of-the-art meters. We're seeing UVB levels 1,200% higher than we're being told. And this is a government document, National Science Foundation, acknowledging that injecting sulfate particles, which is geoengineering, stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, will decimate the ozone layer, destroying from one-quarter to three-quarters of the ozone layer. So this is very significant, and this goes hand in hand with what we see. Uh, again, article, unprecedented ozone hole opens up over the Canadian Arctic. We have very substantial northern hemisphere ozone depletion. Ozone depletion over even northern California is very substantial. We're seeing very dangerous UV levels. We're simply asking that that be disclosed. That's all. So uh, again, it's, it, this is a public health issue that we believe is necessary to disclose. This is a headline from a week ago. Blazing World Record Strongest UV Rays Ever Measured on Earth. Many of you are familiar with the UV reading, a rating of 10 or 11. It's considered extreme. NASA has just recorded, in fact, this is 11 years old. I don't know why it took 11 years for them to disclose this. Readings of 43. 43 is absolutely lethal to be outside. I mean, it's very dangerous to be exposed to that. So, again, we have very high readings here. We're asking for that to be disclosed. Health effects of UV radiation. The list is much longer than what it shows here, but we're seeing everything we would expect to go along with this exposure going off the charts. So uh, again, this, this comes down to a recognition of what's going on in our skies, and more importantly, where this board is concerned, an investigation and disclosure of the contamination and UV issue, which again is a public health hazard. These are trees in our local parking lots here. The bark is completely burnt off these trees. Foliage is dropping. Branches are dying off on the trees. The trees in Redding don't look good. And this is not just a drought-related issue. And I've been in the field with USDA soil scientists measuring also soil pH changes. And this is another arena where we know this contamination is happening. We're seeing pH changes of 10 to 12 times toward alkaline from established USDA soil baseline studies. So, again, one more source of confirmation that this contamination is indeed there. 
Trees in Reading, again, I, I, when I moved here 12 years ago, the trees looked outstanding in this city. Now they look quite horrific and getting worse by the day. And this is exactly what would be the known and expected effect with extensive UV damage. Geoengineering causing drought. All of us know we're being droughted out. For 10 years, I've said, because the science says so, that the more they aerosolize, the less it will rain here, period. So, again, we have yet one more confirmation of when they spray upstream in our storm track, it diminishes and disperses our rain. Mr. Wiggin, I'm going to ask a question. How yes. much time did we uh, have scheduled for? Okay, it, has that already passed? Well, that was a 10-minute beeper. So, so let's do this. How much more time do you think? 30 seconds. Okay, very good. We want seconds. you to be able to conclude. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Uh, NOAA already deciding that we're not going to get rain from El Nino, which is astounding that they would know that so quickly. Another satellite photo, and, and this is hard to see on this screen, but the entire, we, people can view this at geoengineeringwatch.org, the entire Pacific is covered with grid patterns in this shot. It's hard to see. Prevalence of Alzheimer's disease going off the charts. Autism, 10,000% increase. Known connection with aluminum, same with Alzheimer's and, and uh, dementia. Alzheimer's and autism, the common link. Aluminum exposure. Last slide, the right to know. That's all we're asking. The public has a right to know there's a public health hazard in regards to the heavy metal contamination and the UV radiation. That's all we're asking is for that disclosure. Thank you for the extra time. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. respect to the supervisors, they're, they're showing great courtesy that no other board has had the courage to do yet. So let's, let's give them all the respect they deserve. Well, Mr. Williams,